The Pokemon card market can be very volatile and hard to predict at times, but is there a way that we might be able to predict future card prices? Well, let's let's take a look. I was thinking about this today with um, a Stellar Crown on the way, and I was wondering, is there a correlation between the Japanese hit to the English hit? Is there anything that we can take from that and maybe be able to make some sort of prediction? So what I did was... I looked at a few top chase cards, starting with the Greninja. We got the Japanese price here. The average sale price uh, on the Japanese Greninja is $86. And then when you look at the English equivalent, which is still nuts, doing 300 So what I went ahead and did was, you go ahead and you divide. You take the English card price and you divide it by the Japanese price to see how many what the, the difference is. So... The English card is 3.4 times more expensive. Now, I wanted to get a little bit more of a wide variety. Greninja is, you know, that could be the exception to the rule. So if we take a look at the Magikarp from uh, Paldea Evolved or Triplet Beat, which is the Japanese equivalent, it's only 26 bucks. But you look at the English version, and it's 116 So you take 116 divided by 26 it's 4.4 times more expensive in English. So... Those two are pretty consistent, being three and four times more expensive, but we have to look at more cards than that, just to, can't just go off of a few, right? So we use the Raging Bolt, 37 bucks about uh, in Japanese, and in English, about 80. So you, you, do, you, you do that, and it's about 2.16 times, okay? And then, you know, we got, we got some more here. Let's take a look at the Roaring Moon. Now this one's a little bit more interesting. So $52 in Japanese, but we go over to English, and we're only at 56 So 1.07, about even. So that's a little interesting. Then you want to see something more interesting. You look at the Moonbryon. What's the Moonbryon doing? It's actually more expensive in Japanese, around $1,125 um, in Japanese. But then you look at English. 844. So you do that, and it's actually 0.75%, uh, 0.75. So, you know, then that's way different than the Greninja and the Magikarp. So that kind of has to be factored in, but how do you, how are you going to factor that in? Well, let's take a look at a few more, just so we have a little bit more wide uh, range. So we have the Giratina in Japanese, about 300 bucks. Hop over to the English side, just under 370. 369 is what TCG is putting it at. So you do that, and it's one. that's about 1.23 times the Japanese price. So what you can do, and this isn't very scientific. This is just for fun, right? Um, it is kind of cool just to look at stuff like this. But what you can do is if you add all those up and then divide, you get the average, right? So the average is 2.16, 2.16 times when you're looking at this sample size. The English chase card is 2.16 times more expensive than the Japanese equivalent with these cards as our sample. So, if we look at the Terrapagos EX, which I feel should be the chase card from Stellar Crown or, well, it's Stellar Miracle in Japanese. Now, it is important to keep in mind that this set hasn't been released very long the japanese equivalent so you know a lot of the times prices are high and they come down and that's that's very common very very common if you guys aren't familiar uh usually release prices are really high but right now currently the terrapagos is about at 91 dollars in japanese if you were to take 91 dollars and multiply that 2.16 that's 196 dollars for the English equivalent. Now, there are other factors that you kind of have to take into account, and a lot of the times the Japanese sets are smaller, and they usually take like two Japanese sets into one English set, so, but we are looking at a wide range of English to Japanese, so that kind of is factored in, but set size can matter, so you can't really look at just like the Greninja per se, because if the pull rates, um, this is what we have to understand, if the pull rates are exactly the same 
the set size is different. So Stellar Crown is a smaller set. Therefore, the SIR, the, the pulls will be easier. Like for, for specific cards, not for certain types. Like not for SIRs, but when there's less SIRs, it's easier to pull a specific SIR, if that makes sense. So that's how the pull rates will be affected. So 196 for the Terrapagos. And just, I don't know if you can really take anything from this, but it is interesting just to note. So, I mean, if you wanted to play around with the numbers a little bit, if you do the 91, say say it ends up being like the Greninja, which I, I don't, I don't see that personally happening. If it was 3.4 times, which would be just insane, that's going to be a $309. That's going to be equivalent with the Greninja, barely above at $309. I don't, I don't really see that. Um, the, the Raging Bolt is like just 2.16, so that puts it at, you know. The, actually, the Raging Bolt price was the exact average, the 2.16, so. That puts it at 196. So, I think that that is more realistic. But it, it's it's so hard to speculate on these things. Um, I I see I, I see so many different scenarios for could this card be sub 100? Yeah, it's possible. I don't I don't think that that's realistic. I think honestly, I think we might be looking at 150 to 170 range it's nobody can know for sure if anyone's telling you for certain you know they're lying but but we do have some information that we're going off of to kind of uh, speculate here so uh, the numbers say 196 dollars so could this be and that's you know it's a few bucks away from 200 could this be a 200 hundred dollar card possible definitely possible um, the uh, the pre-order numbers that we're kind of seeing on sales seem that people are interested in this set. They're really interested. Um, I'm interested. I changed my strategy a little bit uh, with pre-ordering uh, a case beforehand because of what Twilight has done. So the market may be shifting a little. Um, I think the Rainbow Borders are going to have people chasing this card, personally. And while it's not a Greninja, it is... Uh, I think it is very cool artwork, and like I said before, if you've watched the anime, you'll know that Terrapagos is heavily featured in the new anime. So I do think that that is somewhat important, uh, for probably mainly for the kids who are interested in it, but um, it is a factor to be considered. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about this Terrapagos Stellar Crown speculation. Um I think it's very interesting. I th if if it's a two hundred dollar card, that would be pretty nuts, and the set would be doing really well. Um, so I, I'm excited. I'm just really excited. This is probably, um, if I'm being completely honest, this is the first mainline booster box set that I've been excited for for a while. Um, I just I I don't know. I have a good feeling about these rainbow cards. But uh, something else just to touch on real quick here is I just wanted to bring up this. Uh, the Galvantula, Galvantula, um, you know, Joltik's evolution, not, not as popular of a Pokemon either, because he's not a legendary like Terrapagos, but, um, let's just play a little bit more speculation while we're here. $27, um, and we do the, we'll do 27 times 2.16, so that would put this at about a $58 card. I could see this being at least a fifty dollar card potentially. Um, if the Terrapagos, I could, I, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, it's so hard to know, but uh, I could see this being at least a fifty dollar card because it's the other big uh, rainbow card, and I do think that they look cool. So, um, yeah, that's interesting. Let's also, um, while we're here, while we're speculating, um, let's go back to the Terrapagos just for one second, and let's just play a little bit of a game with. Let's say that this uh, $91 is, you know, it's a little high. It's like release high. Um, so it's going to drop, right? Um, the more boxes are open, the longer the set's been out. It's usually what happens. So let's um, 
let's knock like 30% off the price. Um, sometimes they can drop more than that. Sometimes, you know, about 30% seems probably good. So if we do that times 0.7, that brings this card down to around $63 in Japanese. And then we do the uh, times 2.16 if that ratio is to be trusted, which, once again, it's just for fun, okay? That puts us around a $137 card. Um, I think that's very, very possible, very reasonable. So, um, yeah, so that's a wide range of what this card could be. Um, I just wanted to play with the numbers. I do apologize if it's a little uh, kind of all over the place. But it's it is just pure speculation. So I mean that that's that's what we're doing here. So um, two hundred dollar card. <clears throat> I could see all of these scenarios coming about. So it <laughs> it really it really is so hard to tell. Um, what we're gonna do is let me know in the comments what you think this card's gonna end up at. Um, that will be fun. Yeah. So put a put a dollar a uh, dollar amount in the comments. Let me know what you think the Terrapagos is going to end up at. Um, we'll say, you know, like a, at least like a few months, like where it kind of settles a few months after release, kind of where Twilight's at now. Um, let me know in the comments. That'll be fun. Fun to play. Also, um, if you guys are new to the channel, well, if you made it this far in the video and you're not already subscribed, obviously you enjoyed the content. So do me a huge favor. Go down below and hit the subscribe button and then go back to a few videos back. I'm doing a giveaway. We, As of this recording, we have not hit 5,000 subscribers, but we are very close. And we are doing a Japanese 151 booster box giveaway. Uh, there's going to be three winners. Japanese 151 booster box, a PSA 10 of your choice. I'm going to give you like five options, uh, at least around $50 value. Um, so you can pick there. And then the third winner, we're going to do some sleeved boosters. Um, probably mostly Sword and Shield. We'll do some Scarlet and Violet, kind of mix it up and uh, ship those out to you guys. So if you want to enter, you go back to that video. I'll also uh, put a link in the description um, for for the giveaway. But um, yeah, I think that's going to do it for this one. Um, yeah, just playing, playing the speculation game. I try not to generally speculate too hard um, on some stuff because... It's just, like I said, it's so volatile, it's it's impossible to predict, but uh, it would be very, I'll tell you what would be very, very interesting. If the Terrapagos somehow settles anywhere near that $196, wouldn't that be crazy? <laughs> um, so yeah, we will see. I am excited. Uh, that'll be next month, uh, September. We have the Stellar Crown release, so... Should be very, very interesting um, to see what happens. I'm super excited. I know a lot of you guys are as well. I've been reading the comments. So um, most of you guys are excited. It seems like in the comments for Stellar Crown, a few of you are not, which is totally understandable. Um, not everybody likes every set. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you don't like it, no worries. Save your money for uh, something else. Save your money for Team Rocket, for Paradise, Paradise Dragona, whatever whatever you want to do. Um you're not going to get any judgment from me. So I, I just, uh, you know, collecting is collecting. Investing is investing. Collect how you want. Invest how you want. Do what you want. Don't let anyone make you feel bad. Um, if you're new, if you just started collecting today, if you've been collecting for 10 years, um, you know, do what you want. So, um, yeah, this is a fun video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.